All right, guys, so bear with me here. Um, kind of going through a cold right now. Uh, I want to show you guys real quick how to render wireframes, set up some really quick lights, and how to render wireframe in Maya. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we're using Maya 2015. And uh, there are a few things that have changed from 20, uh, 2013. And I had an older video on this. Again, excuse my voice today. I'm um, not uh, 100%. So what I'm going to do here is let's go and add a material to this guy. And every time when I want to show off a model, what I'll do is I'll make sure that I use um, a, a nice material that's kind of catering to light bouncing. And one of them that was developed by um, the guys at Autodesk is the Maya MIA as M, is MIA X? It's a great material. So I'm gonna select this whole guy, right click. I'm gonna assign a new material. Scroll down a little bit. We're gonna go to MIA X, and I like this one because it actually has some good slots for plugging in your normal maps. Now we're not gonna do that for this. We just want to get this guy set up. So I'll point these few things out real quick because it was in my other video. Um, you can also turn on your own ambient occlusion, which works really well, and I set that to 45. I also go up here a little bit and I make sure my glossy is down to nothing and my color I'll leave it white um, and I'll move down the glossy samples to nothing too. go up a little bit we'll leave the index refraction by default which is fine and I think that's about it with the reflectivity up we want to get rid of that get it completely gone and glossy is completely gone so we want it very matted one very flat and the color here we want it to be white. So both of these will be white and that's totally fine. Alright, so got that all set up. And what we'll do is we'll set up some quick physical sun and sky. Now keep in mind when you use physical sun and sky, it is mental ray driven. <coughs> but unfortunately, sometimes going from one computer to the next, you can get different results. This is due, I think, mainly because of a graphics card issue. I still haven't been able to figure this out, and I've been using physical sun and sky for a while. I'll see one, it could even be the monitors that I'm working with, but uh, sometimes when you move the light around and it looks fine and then you go to another computer, you'll notice the color variants are different. Even when you render them and bring them into Photoshop, you'll notice there's something quite right, not right. So keep those things in mind. It isn't necessarily perfect, but Physical Sun and Sky is a valid um, method. Just make sure that you save all your settings and write them down. Even changing any of these things, you'll forget. Trust me, you will. So writing them down is, is great. So we set it to mental rate. We'll go to indirect lighting real quick. I'm going to turn on final gather. We don't need uh, global illumination. We're not going to be using caustics to bounce light around. We're not trying to get accurate photons. We just want to get accurate representation. With final gather set up, we don't have to set this high. We'll set that to 50. And point density, we can set that to 2. This comes from the guys that actually made this, believe it or not. One of my buddies uh, sat underneath them and underneath their training. And you can actually get some decent results with 50 in accuracy and point density to 2. Um, you always want to go to common tab. It's just a good habit to get into. Maya is a lot more powerful than it used to be. But still, you want to get in here and you want to make sure you set your resolution correctly. Cover this real quick. And we'll do it like HD 720 is fine for now. Um, but you want to make sure you go to render options and turn off enable default light. Believe it or not, this can sometimes, depending on your settings, can sometimes still be on and not quite give you as accurate or as detailed lighting as you want. It's always safe to turn that off. <clears throat> so we go back to indirect lighting, final gather setup. We also want to make sure that we have a camera set up accordingly. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to create. And I'm going to create a camera. We'll just create a basic camera. We're going to look through that camera. And this camera we can have go around the model. We can even set a turntable. I'm not going to go into turntable, but under animation, you can animate and you can set your turntable here and determine what frames it's going to be and it's basically going to get that camera um, and the model to work together. With that camera set up we're going to go to our settings. We're going to turn on our resolution gate. This shows us exactly where our cutoff point is set to this resolution. Pretty nice. So there's my little mech guys. It's just the dude I modeled from some image I found on the internet for my students to animate for my game animation class. He was completely rigged and all that joy cool stuff. Alright, so let's go to render here. Um, and let's take a look here with some of the things we have to do. So we have that all set up. We need to go to features now because not only do we have this guy set up and uh, ready to go, 
we want to turn on our contour rendering here in just a bit. So under features, we're going to go to contour rendering. And we're going to turn enable contour rendering. With that on, you'll notice we get a little bit of an error here. And don't worry, we'll fix that because it's wanting us to change our quality, which we'll do in a second. We're going to go to draw um, property differences. Um, and we want to go in here and say around all poly faces. Turn that on. But we don't have any lights right now. Remember, we have this set up. We have a, a camera in here. We turn on Final Gather. So you can set up your lights any way you can. To make things faster, I'm just going to go Fizzle Sun and Sky. Hit Create under Indirect Lighting. Final Gather set to 50, and this is the 2. Now, initially, if we rendered this out, you're going to notice it's very milky. That's pretty much how it comes in with Fizzle Sun and Sky. But we don't want it milking. We don't want that going on. You'll notice our ambient occlusion built into the material is actually pretty nice. A couple things we need to do. So let's fix that milkiness real quick. Number one, go to the camera properties. Remember we have a camera that we created and that view which is set up here, as soon as you hit physical sun and sky they get connected. Now, I'm not going to get into reassigning that. That's something you can dig in on your own. But just know that they're connected. And with them connected, we're going to go to Camera Attributes here. And we want to go to MI Exposure Simple. And we want to turn up, or turn down, I should say, our Gamma. And when you do that, if we look at our old render, that's our old render. We'll save it to compare it. And then we'll render it now. And you're going to notice it's a lot darker, a lot stronger. This is kind of what you want. Now we're getting some serious hot spots here. And that's a matter of just adjusting your light. And even though you have a physical sun and sky in here, you can turn it down and bring in some secondary lights. You'll notice it's a little bit edgy, slightly pixelated. We'll fix that in a second. So let's go to our light itself. And you'll see our light in your outliner. And there he is. Grab the sun direction. He's really tiny. Usually comes in the middle of the map. And we can rotate him a bit. And when you rotate him, if you turn on BPR, you got to be careful when you do BPR. Make sure you save before you do it because it does crash sometimes. You can rotate your light and you'll see the results as you render. See, make our light a little bit off to the side there. You see BPR update. We'll turn down our multiplier and you'll see the same thing. Now I'm going to turn it off because I don't want it to crash in the middle of doing this. So we're just going to go to regular render. And again, it's asking for a quality control. We're going to take care of that in a second. Um, let's go and zoom in a little bit because it's way too far away. And uh, let's go to our light properties again. Oops, sun shape, my bad. And uh, even though you might mess with the intensity here, this isn't actually where you want to go to control that. We want to go to our MIA physical sun and sky. So it's linked, the one that's linked to the camera. And you want to control your multiplier here. You always want to make sure that your shadows are on. They should be on by default. Maya does that now. Didn't do it before, but does it now. The default shadow should work just fine. But we want to go in here under MIA phys uh, Physical Sun and Sky and turn this down a bit. Let's set this to like a point, I don't know, 7. Probably could be lower. And we'll see now when we render. I'll just render the whole thing, whatever. It's pretty fast. You'll see your light's a little bit darker than it was before. And we can lower that considerably if you want to. So we'll, we'll set this down to like 3, which is actually pretty decent, which I did in another class. And anytime you want to get out of this, just hit Escape. You should know that. Select that and Escape. And we'll do 0.3 there. And again, you can lower your light to even get a lower time of day. V-Ray is a lot better because you can actually punch in in their physical sun and sky, punch in the time of day. And there is a plugin, I think, floating around for Maya, but I can't remember it offhand. All right, so we got that all set up. Pretty cool. Are we done with the wireframe part? No, because remember, we went into features. We turn on contour, but there's a few more things we have to do to get this to work. We turn on all around all faces. We enable contour rendering. We got to go to quality here. We have to change this guy to legacy sampling, sampling mode. Turn that on. And I'm going to turn my max samples up. So it actually looks nice. Cool. Are we done yet? No. We have to go to our windows, render editors, and we have to go to our hypershade. Sorry, I'm not my usual comedy self tonight. <coughs> Voice is very limited. Go to the MIAX. Go to this guy here. 
With him selected in our hyper shade, I'm going to graph him completely. With him graphed, I'm going to go to my shading network. Now, this is the next step you have to do because you'll notice as we've been rendering, no wireframe showing up, even with my adaptive and legacy sampling on. It's rendering the background there. Um, because what we have to do is you have to grab that material, you have to graph that material, and then you want to select the MIA material shader group because in there, underneath mental ray, will give you the opportunity to get your wireframe on. Get your wireframe on. There's a sense of humor we all know. And look at that. That's already looking pretty cool. Um, and I darkened it and lowered my light, removing some of the hot spots. All right. So I'm going to render this at half the size because it's going to take too long. So uh, we go to our render options and oh, they're not there. So let's go to hot box. Let's say show all jerk face. So now we do our hot box. We should get our render settings in here. Ugh, too much stuff to look at. Ugh. Oof. Where is it at? There we go. Render, render. There he goes on the bottom. Render. So in here, we're going to our test resolution. We'll set that to like 50%. A little bit faster. All right. And you can always turn that back in that same menu. Now, what I was talking about. Material. Grab this guy. Graph it. Select the shader group. With the shader group selected, go to Metal Ray. Turn on Enable Contra Rendering. Now, the cool thing about this, you have an alpha control. So you can actually animate this, believe it or not. You can set keys so you can have your wireframe show up and disappear. Pretty cool. But let's see what we got. So our model is kind of grayish. So these white lines might work out pretty well. Let's render. And you'll see now we'll have half the amount that we had to deal with before. Magic justice. This is pretty cool, man. So let me know if you guys have any questions. And I will answer them. This is probably one of my shorter videos. Um, just need to relax tonight. I've been working on stuff all day long. And uh, this is my last video of the evening. Um, for those that are in my class, um, if you have any questions, feel free to post in the group. And I'm going to do the baking cake in an oven and taking it out moment so we don't have to wait for all these pixels to render. Give me just a second. All right, so we see that our lines are there. Dun, dun, dun. They finally showed up. Awfully thick, right? Super big and ginormous. So you can control the width here. We can lower that sucker. And we can change the color, too. So if we want to go black. Now, be aware, if you make the lines, and we'll just do a little section so you can see it. If you make the lines really tiny, whiny, um, they can flicker. So you got to be careful. And you don't want to also don't want to make them too thick because on the other flip side of things, they can also flicker. The problem is that video all across the board, every country you go to, um, video interlacing, this whole thing where things are too small and the video doesn't know what to render first, the black or the light, the dark or the light um, variables. And that's just the nature of things. It'll start to flicker. So sometimes when you do your wireframe, it's probably better to get in closer on your model. Far away for dense meshes are not flattering. And nobody knows what they're looking at. It looks like Google Maps exploded. Um, but it also, they decided to use all black lines. What, why would they do that? Doesn't make sense. All right, so that's it, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm posting this in my class. Taking this class, Modeling Studio, let me know if you have questions.